Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Haltech Technically Speaking. Today, we're going to be having a closer look over the mighty CarMod Supercharged Mini. This engine is very special in the way that the intake and the exhaust ports work. Now, on a conventional four-cylinder engine, we've got four intake ports and four exhaust ports. And typically, they're set up on other opposite sides of the cylinder head, meaning a cross-flow design. Now, this Siamese port engine has five ports in total. It's got two intake ports and three exhaust ports. So, the way that it works is, on our two intake ports, they're shared by two cylinders. So cylinder one and two share one inlet port, cylinders three and four share the other inlet port. Likewise on the exhaust side, cylinder one and cylinder four have their own exhaust outlets, where cylinders two and three share a common outlet. All of these ports are found on the back side of the engine and it's not a cross flow design. So this is excellent for engine packaging, not so great for performance and tuning. Because the firing order is 1, 3, 4, 2, and the inlets for cylinder 1 and 2 are paired together, and 3 and 4 are paired together, that means that each inlet port gets very busy for half an engine cycle. Unfortunately, that means they're in a row. So if we look at the firing order and the way that the inlet ports are paired up, we'll find that the inlet port for cylinders 1 and 2 has an intake charge, an intake charge, nothing, nothing. Likewise, the second inlet port has nothing, nothing, inlet charge, inlet charge. So for half of the engine cycle, each inlet port isn't doing anything. Now, it doesn't seem like so much of a problem until you look at the second intake charge. The first intake charge, the homogeneous charge is sitting there, ready to be sucked into the engine. The second charge needs to be prepared very, very quickly because it happens immediately after the first. Getting the fuel in for the second event is tricky and it requires us to fire the injectors twice as much as we normally would to ensure that there's an air-fuel mixture there ready to go into the combustion chamber. While we're here, check out where the Haltech ECU is mounted. The guys have done a really nice job of using the factory mounting bracket and then cutting the factory ECU connector off and re-terminating into a Haltech connector. This is a really nice solution when you've got a nice new wiring harness in good condition and when you don't have room to make a patch harness or fit a fully terminated engine harness to the car. If you're not quite sure about which harnessing system you should be using for your car, check out one of the previous videos in the link below. A high compression engine that's boosted, but supercharged or turbocharged is prone to detonation or knocking. If we don't change the fuel type, we'd have to choose to lower the compression ratio of the engine by either fitting domed pistons or fitting a thicker head gasket. Both of these options are quite expensive. The other downside of lowering the compression ratio of the engine is that we also lose off-boost performance. So, like everything, it's a compromise. By reducing the charge air intake temperature, as well as using a fuel with a much higher anti-knock index, or AKI, we're able to tune this engine a lot more aggressively, so we can feed a lot more ignition timing, make a lot more power, yet be nowhere near the point of knocking or pinging or detonation. This results in us using about 38% more fuel per volume to travel the same distance. So the fuel tank doesn't change size, and what that means is that we're gonna lose about 38% of our range. Like I said, everything's a compromise. Luckily, this Mini's been set up with a flex fuel sensor. So that means when the dreaded fuel light comes on and you're nowhere near an ethanol-equipped servo, 
or petrol station, don't be too worried. You can just fill that with regular petrol. Then the fuel, the ignition and all the limited tables will adjust in order to make sure that the car runs safely on petrol, a mixture of ethanol and petrol like E20, E40, E60 or E80, like it's tuned on. Once you've filled up, started the car, driven out of the petrol station, you'll feel the difference immediately. If you've just changed from ethanol back to petrol and you're driving out the driveway, you'll certainly notice a reduction in performance immediately. This engine's boosted with a belt-driven supercharger, which is giving the engine about 40% more power than it had in a factory trim. It's such a light and nimble car that I'm really excited to see how it goes. Ooh, a little bit of a tight fit in here. Now, if only you could figure out how to get the air conditioning pump in there, as well as the supercharger, this would be the ideal car. Except for me, obviously, because I clearly don't fit in it. Unlike a turbocharger that has its boost controlled by a wastegate, which directs the exhaust flow either through the exhaust housing or bypasses it in order to control the boost pressure, a supercharger is driven off the crank pulley. So there's a crank pulley and there's a supercharger pulley, and it's the relationship between these two pulleys that gives us our boost pressure. If we make the supercharger pulley larger, our boost goes down. If we make the supercharger smaller, the boost goes up. The boost is also dependent on RPM. That's why people say that supercharged engines are really linear, because the more revs we give it, the more boost it gets. <laughs> that is so much more fun than a stock Mini. Well, that's all we've got time for today. As always, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. My name's Scott, and I'll see you next time.